Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome. Today is Tuesday. Uh, well, let's see. what What's the date today? Tuesday the 6th, December 6th, and we are so glad to have you here. My name is Dave, and this here is Steve Edwards, and we are talking mules and donkeys for the next 60 minutes, and we are so glad that you are here to join us. Steve, how have things been going for you as of late? Well, I, I we, we've got three inches of rain. Over, oh, man. It is really nice. I mean, nice little soaking rain. It just barely was coming down. And I, it is a soaking rascal. Boy, it's pretty good. If we y'all have. That was nice. But we, the bad thing about this morning, we had to go in town to see Susan's doctor. And then, you know, when you're in town, you, you since you're so far out, you have to get as much as you can done. And, oh, man. Anyway, we, we just got back here about an hour ago. I'm plumb wore out. That that city living is not for me. Yeah, so y'all look at Steve Edwards right here. This is the epitome of a city slicker right here. Steve loves the city. Steve loves asphalt. He's a big fan of skyscrapers, right, Steve? Are you talking to Steve? Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you what. Uh, it has come. There's been a lot of rain that has come down out here in Arizona. And one of the prettiest things you will ever see in your life is all of the green that sprouts up on the desert mountains uh, there after the rain leaves. It's just, it's incredible out there on the ranch. It's just so much fun. Uh, Steve, that reminds me, we need to nail down some dates for uh, maybe a spring clinic, see if we can get something picked out. I think you threw out some dates to me and I think I forgot to double check them, but we need to come up with some dates and uh, let folks come out there and uh, experience all that the desert has to offer and show them some things with the mules too. I think they'd appreciate that as well. You betcha. You betcha. No, that'd be, that'd be right. We're, we're, we're talking about a clinic in Montana uh, up there at Ron's up in Superior, Montana. I'm thinking sometime in June. That'd be, ooh, that would be beautiful weather out there. Yeah. yeah. You just have to look at your calendar and, and uh, maybe we'd take the boys up there and, and uh, see what happens. That'd be fun. That'd be a lot of fun. Well, here and now, we're going to do a clinic, but this is going to be one of them newfangled clinics here of this year internet. We're going to talk about mules and donkeys digitally, and the way this goes is we talk about mules and donkeys every week uh, for about 60 minutes. There's three things that we ask. First and foremost, that you let us know that you're watching, uh, put your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather is like in the comment section, and uh, that would be dandy. Of course, today we are recording this episode because I am traveling, and so we wanted to make sure to bring it to you here on Tuesday, so, uh, so we will say hello now, but say hello to everybody else that's watching, and I'll go back and take a look at y'all uh, later on this afternoon. So your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather's like. The second is that you ask any and every mule or donkey question that you got, and the reason why is because we want to help you. We want to see if there's something that we can do to help you get out there, gain the trust of your animals, get results with all the training that you're doing, because it should be a rewarding thing. It shouldn't be something that you want to, uh, you know, kind of Turn in your rope because it's been frustrating. It should be something that's rewarding and a lot of fun. So ask any and every mule or donkey question that you got. Third thing is that you share the broadcast. If you're on YouTube, it's real simple. Just click the like and subscribe and then share the broadcast. There's a share button. If you're on Facebook, same thing. Tag a friend or family member in the comment section and then go ahead and click that share button and uh, it'll be fantastic. I want to say hello uh, to our friends who join us normally. Uh, Dave O'Brien, we got Cowboy Ken joining us normally. We've got Jim Rhodes who will join us. Uh, We've got uh, David Pengelly. Uh, Mr. Come Along Coffee himself. We've got uh, David and Die, who are all the way down under. We've got uh, uh, Tamar who joins us. We've got, uh, oh gosh, we've got our friends in Southern California. We've got uh, um, just Tracy uh, down in Queensland, Australia. We've got so many friends, Lamar, friends and family who just join us from all over the country. Yolanda out there in the Netherlands. Uh, It's just so much fun. And Steve, we've got something uh, to share with uh, all of our regulars and all of you new folks today, something new that's coming to the Queen Valley Mule Ranch store. You want to tell us uh, what we've got coming up here, Steve? Yeah, first of all, Dave, that that little show we did on Sir Single and Doing 
things rather than letting your animal sit all winter and he's going to stand anyway. So why not stand with a surf single on him, have him have a halter on him to do some halter training, put the come along hitch on him, do some come along work. Why not spend an, an hour, say, say four to six hours a week and train on this here mule rather than let him sit around. Now I realize that sometimes some of y'all don't have a dry place to work and it's cold and muddy, but I'm sure that if you took in your mule and put him in a, in a, in a nice pen, put the surf single on him, bit him up and turn him loose. He's going to look like this mule here. Now, Dave, he's going to show you a picture here shortly. You're going to see this mule that, that one of our mule folks sent to us. You see this mule is got his nose on the vertical. He looks like he's supposed to look right there. That's the way your mule should look, you know, and that is without anybody in his back. You see that? The Martin Gale is doing a job. So we got some other videos for you of uh, of the mules and, and sir singles. And that's that, that, folks, you need to be doing this stuff during the wintertime. Don't let them just sit. Don't let them sit. You get fat. They get fat. You don't need it. Okay, so let's go on. You need to be looking at that, that the videos and that surf single work. Anyway, I have, I, I got to tell you, we, you know what we got to talk about? We got to talk about hind ends. Yep. Your hind end, my hind end, not the mules. Uh, we're not going to call it a butt mule because that's a butt mule. But we are going to talk about your hind quarters. Yep. And we're also going to talk about your thighs. Oh, my goodness. We're getting to be, a, 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 this is not going to be one of them porn jobs. All right. But this is really important. This is really important. I want you guys to understand this and these gals. All right. Is that is that when you call me and you ask me, Steve, what size saddle do you recommend? Um, I'm going to ask for your height and weight. And everybody's wanting to lose weight. Everyone. Well, right now I'm, I'm X, Y, Z, but I'm losing some weight. Oh, good for you. Yeah. I give up that losing weight stuff. I'm 73 years old. I've been trying to get rid of weight now since I had my hip done. Anyway, it's another story. So anyway, here's what I got. When when ladies, when they set a saddle, they set a saddle very erect. They set nice and square and everything looks good. In a, in a show, man, I mean, they look good. Us guys, we slouch, you know. That's just kind of what we do. We slouch and uh, we set the saddle and we go down the trail. So I need to know your height and weight. It gives me a general idea. You know, so here's what I'm talking about. I developed a new saddle. It's not really a new saddle, but it's the original cowboy that is now on a trail light skirting. All my saddles have the same, same frame. So the saddle tree is a wood saddle tree, double covered in fiberglass and rosin. I mean, it is one tough tree. It's the same bars. I've been using for over 25 years. Steve Edwards bars, not mule bars. Get that in your mind, folks. Don't, don't, don't look at my, my saddle and say it's a mule saddle. No, no, no. I am not like everybody else out there that says they got a mule saddle. Not. Okay. Now, when the gals sit in the saddle, they have a different pelvis than we do, and they got them little pin bones on their hind end. I understand. I don't know. I only know about one hind end. That's my wife's for 54 years. But anyway, let's go on. So when they set a saddle, they need a padded seat. And then they sit down in the saddle. Guys, we don't have that, that pelvis like they got that works in this sort of thing, those little pin bones. So a, a, a unpadded seat works the best for us. And then we can sit back and down in the saddle, sit down in the saddle. Most guys tell me that with a padded seat, they kind of feel like they're forward in the saddle. And they are. That's mainly because of their pelvis. And it's also because of the way uh, your, your fenders, your, your legs are set in, in the saddle. Nobody can tell you. Nobody can say, I can make you a comfortable saddle. It's impossible. Nobody's going to do that. I'll custom make you a saddle. Sure. You know what? Our saddles are all custom made, except for one thing. <laughs> yeah, we got clickers. We push a button, it cuts out all the leather. And then we have guys individually hand build the saddles. That's what we do, okay? And, and, and it works good, it's consistent. That's what it does. 
But that saddle, it that leather, in order to shape it to you, this is important. In order to shape it to you, male or female, you wet with a spray bottle with soapy water in it, and you sweat the back half of the fenders, you wet underneath the jockey, and you turn the fenders, and you put a broom handle through them overnight, or a PVC pipe I like to use overnight. Hear that? Now, the next morning, I unravel it, and now the, the fenders are kind of shaped kind of wobbly here and there, wet them again, now go ride. I mean, soak it wet like an old wet newspaper. See, if you want your saddle to fit you, or if you want to shape leather to a particular shape, you have to wet it, have to wet it in order to get the saddle to take the shape. So now you're going to wet it, spray bottle soapy water, tablespoon of dish soap, any kind of dish soap, Spray the back half of the fenders and underneath the jockey. That's the part where your thighs go and then go right. Pretty soon, that saddle is going to start shaping to you. Don't moan and groan and complain and say, oh, it don't work here. It don't work. No, no, folks, you have to wet leather to shape it. All these saddle companies, when you go out there and you see their saddles, it's the same saddle, same tree as all the other companies. They may have different names, but they use two things. For a tree, semi quarter horse, narrow, full quarter horse, wider. That's the main saddles they use, main trees that they use. So when you go into a saddle shop and you look around at those saddles, you look around at those, guess what you're seeing? Two saddles. That's thousands, millions of horses. So why is it so unique that my one saddle? fits all mules and donkeys. The main reason that is, I fit bone structure. When it comes to muscle mass, listen, muscle mass can change. These equine can lose 100 pounds over a weekend. They can lose 100 pounds. So now if we go like these saddle makers do, and they take a tree and they put it on there and they take another tree and they put it on there, and finally they say, you know what? That tree right there fits the best. Well, it fits the best in January when he's been fat and sitting around. But come July when he's been rowed and he's thinning down, he's going to have a different fit. Why? They're fitting to muscle mass. Muscle mass changes. I fit to bone structure. Bone structure does not change. They don't do it. I found that when those bars come together on that saddle, fitting that mule's back with that spine being in the middle, I want seven eighths of an inch from that spine to this, this bar. And I want it close. I don't want it wide. When you get wide, you get up on the sixth or seventh rib, you get up on those fat pockets, and you got a good chance of kicking fat pockets out, out and crippling the mule or a donkey. Okay. Now, whenever I say donkey, I mean mule. And whenever I say mule, I mean donkey. All right. So we got these pictures of these of this new saddle. It basically looks like a cowboy. But it has corridor fenders. It has corridor skirting. And that makes it easier on us old folks, old guys, me. Okay. Now I like a I prefer an unpadded seat. Uh, people tell me I better have a padded seat because I ride so oh, five, six hours a day. A weekend. That's uh, 10, 12 hours is more like some of my days, especially when I was riding so much. Unpadded seat. I'm down in the saddle, I'm sitting down in the seat, and if your fenders are adjusted correctly to your legs, you're going to be all right. The good thing about Cordura is it swings, it gives. And me with two replaced hips and 32 broken bones, I need all the help I can get, okay? So here I is, I've developed this saddle so that it will mainly work for men. Now guys, if you want to pad a saddle, okay, but I'm warning you ahead of time, some of you are going to be saying, I feel like I'm forward in the saddle. That's because of your pelvis. It's not because of the saddle. Okay. Uh, and get that in your mind. I've had people tell me they've gone to saddle stores and they've set in all these saddles, all these saddles. And there, there's that saddle, man. Ain't that nice? And I mean, that's a working son of a gun. Anyway, they said they, they feel like they're forward in the saddle. 
women feel like I'm sitting down in. So the that is basically, I'm going to call it the buckaroo light. It's an unpadded seat sitting on my, my Steve Edwards tree. And it's got my conchos on it and everything. But guess what? That saddle weighs 18 pounds. 18 pounds. And I mean, it's a tough rascal. Good saddle. Look, go, go look on my website and look under um, Trail Light Saddle. And you'll see my original Trail Light Saddle I'm riding in. Yes, it has a little bit of padding. I don't care for padding. Okay, because I ride off my legs. And that's what everybody needs to be doing. But let's go on. Uh, you're going to see this on my website. We're going to start selling them. They're the same price as a, uh, a Cordura saddle, a Trail Light. So we'll, you'll see the same pricing, ships the same. Uh, I strongly suggest that you use Beta for your bridge and breast collar, and it's tough. There's no maintenance to it. Guys, you and I don't like cleaning. <laughs> and this saddle here, you don't have to mess with it. It doesn't pull on your legs. <coughs> it's easy on your back. It's great. If you got back and hip and knee problems, this corridor is for you and it is tough. I cowboy on this thing. I rope off of it. I use this saddle. And it is a great, great little saddle. So start watching for it. You're going to start seeing it on the website. It's uh, It uh, weighs roughly 18 pounds. And I'll get that exact weight here uh, tomorrow, uh, Dave. And then uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll you, you're gonna start seeing that saddle out there, folks, on the website. Like I said, now here's, here's the reason I developed it. Guys got a different pelvis than the girls do. They do. And so they set saddle a whole lot different. And their legs are different too, the way they move in the, in the fenders. So here's the deal. You know, the older you get, yeah, I gotta admit it, I'm 73. It's hard throwing that saddle up there. It is. But when you're only talking less than 20 pounds, oh, 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 man, it's nice. It's really nice. So give that a try. If you got questions, as always, you can always call me uh, at uh, 602-999-6853 or email me, text me, something like that. I know there's a lot of ways to get a hold of me, you know, but there's the saddle, y'all, and it's it's nice, Dave. So one of the big questions that folks will ask us when it comes to the saddle, uh, next to will it work on my mule, uh, is, you know, which is the best saddle for me? And so I just want to uh, iterate again, what Steve said is it's the same tree underneath every single saddle. Uh, as far as which one's going to fit your mule best, they're all the same when it comes to the tree itself. Of course, every now and again, someone will, someone will ask if, if there can be a a hornless saddle uh, that that gets made, okay, and so that's that's different. But um, the ones that just come as is, they're all the same. And so it's not so much a matter of which one is best for my mule. It's a matter of at this point, it's a matter of weight, and really, it's a matter of look. And of course, you've got the uh, a slick fork saddle, so that's a little bit different there. Um, and, and so some folks may want that, but it really comes down to just a difference of weight and a difference of look. And then of course, price, uh, you've got some saddles that are a little bit less expensive and some saddles that are a little bit more expensive. But, uh, what we try to do is make sure that the saddle, uh, that you get, you get it fixed up and saddled correctly because your mule is the one who's really going to love having the right fit. You don't want your mule to pay the price for using the wrong saddle. And I'll tell you what, Steve got on my case early on saying, Dave, do not say mule saddle because anybody can just go in the tax store and can slap on a word that says mule. And there you go. You got a mule saddle. He says, it's not a mule saddle. It's a Steve Edwards saddle. You cannot go get this saddle anywhere else. Of course, we're always happy to answer questions. Like Steve said, we got folks who have messaged us here on this program, said, Steve, I got your saddle and it doesn't work for me. And we talk through it. We don't avoid it. And so we want to make sure that you get the results that you want. So that's real exciting. We're very uh, happy to be able to uh, offer yet another option. And so the most recent ones that we've had, uh, 
in addition to this one just now coming out is we've got the Extreme Ultralight, which is a great saddle that's been really well received. That's uh, it's it's very light and it's got a lot of really sharp look to it. And then the Heritage saddle, which has some just really unique old timey looks uh, with the rawhide uh, back on the cantle. Um, it's just really, really cool. So muleranch.com, you can go check it out. Uh, but they'll all fit the mule uh, the same way because they are the same bars made on the same tree and folks have really enjoyed it. Steve, I do have a question and this is a follow-up to that program you were talking about that we did last week, the uh, the Sir Single Training. And I got someone message in, it's Bruce. He says, Steve, I want to see what bit I'm supposed to get with the Martingale. And now, of course, I'm telling Bruce, it comes with the double twisted wire snaffle bit that you want to use. But Steve, why do we sell those in combination? Because folks have asked, well, I've got my own bit. I want to use your martingale. Or I've got my martingale or I've got uh, my own bridle. I want to use your bit. Why do we only sell those in combination, Steve? Well, I've tried and I've tried and I've tried bits. I've tried bridles. I've tried German martingales. I've tried, uh, oh, I don't know, just all kinds of different ways to try to have control, that's what I used to call it, over these animals. Now I call it communication. That picture that we saw earlier of that mule standing there with his nose on the vertical and his head down, that's what that martingale does without anybody on its back. Like that. Nobody's there. So guess what that means? That means that martingale, the bit, the bridle, the the uh, uh, the martingale itself, which is the string that goes down through there, that right there is telling that mule, get your nose on a vertical and get your head down. What's so important about that? Because when the nose is on the vertical, he's listening to your bit. Hear that? If the nose is sticking out, he's not listening to your bit. What's that mean? You've got no control. You've got hardly any communication. And you're just a passenger riding a wreck looking for a place to happen. Next part. See how the head is down. When the head is down, he's balanced. Top of his hip, top of his wither, top of his head balanced. That means he's driving off his back hind quarters. And he's not pulling in front. So watch most of these videos that you see out there, watch and see where that mule's head is. The mule's head is in the air. The mule's head is in the air. Why is that? Because that person is pulling on him and the mule is trying to find a way to get soft. And that's what this martingale does. It tells them without anybody on their back, get your head down, get your nose on the vertical, and they'll be soft. They're quiet. That's what you want. So that's what you need to do with that surf single. Uh, in that uh, that series that we just did there. Folks, take your mule, put it in a stall, and put the surf single on, put the martingale on, and train them. The way I designed that martingale, it's all riveted together. There's no sense in changing it. Everything is made so that it works correctly. As soon as you change it and you change the bit, if you put just the bit itself in that mule's mouth, he'll gap his mouth, he'll throw his head in the air, and he's got you. But with the martingale, that string goes across the bit and it's like a violin bow going across the violin when that string goes across there smooth and easy guess what your mule's gonna pay attention but as soon as you start pulling on him the mule's gonna pull against you he's got you it's the biggest thing with the mule they don't want to be pulled on so start with your start with your your come along hitch and go into your rope halter with a sur single in the round pen, like we got pictures, we're going to be showing you that a little later on of some mules moving around. You'll be able to see them using a surf single. And then you'll see the mule rider's martingale, which is what we just talked about in a surf single. Folks, that keeps them soft. Even my wife's mule, that's a world champion. Even uh, Stacy, world champion. Everybody's ridden that mule from my grandkids to a 96 year old blind man. What makes her so nice? I keep her tuned up. What's the tune-up? That, that Sir single with that Mule Riders Martingale, four to six hours a week, they go in the round pen and they go in the corral and they stand with that bridle and they learn to respect that bridle. 
Yeah, that's right. So uh, we did a, a webinar. And so if you're watching this, uh, hello from the past, if you're watching this in the future, uh, just send a message to support at muleranch.com and say, Dave, can I get that Sir Single webinar? And I'll send it over to you and you can see everything that Steve is talking about. It was a really great webinar. There's a lot of really great information, good examples. We got some video there. You can see how it's meant to work. Uh, of course, that photo that we were showing, that shows the end result of what you want. And I talked to Virginia, Steve. Uh, she was on cloud nine. Having you talk about how well her mule is looking and everything like that, she was. She's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show this to all of my mule friends. I'm gonna let them see uh, that Steve knows what he's talking about. I thought that was pretty cool. So y'all send a message, support at muleranch.com, and I'll get that out to you. The next question we had, this one come in from Noel. Uh, she said, uh, I need some help with this mule. I've had her over a year and I can't catch her. She is shy. And she keeps backing up and she sent in a photo. So what would, I'll put that photo up here, but what would you say uh, to Noel with this mule that she can't catch her, had her over a year, she's shy and keeps backing up? Okay, I don't see a picture yet. There we are. Hey, now them mules look familiar. Black mules with dark bay and, and uh, stock and leg. Yep, that was what my mules used to look like. All right, so number one. Number one, we have a round pin. When you approach, now we've got on, on the how to communicate uh, the five DVD set, I show us working in a round pin, but here's the deal. When you approach, always approach the shoulder, don't approach the nose, okay? The nose says three things. Come to me, go away from me, and back up, okay? So in the very beginning, don't approach the nose. When you approach the nose, that's horse training. That's horse training. Don't do that with a mule. They'll put you on the nose. The reason this mule is hard to catch, because everybody does the same thing. They approach the nose and try to pet on the nose. Mules don't like their nose messed with, folks. Okay, now don't get me wrong. Yeah, sure enough, somebody's going to tell me my mule can't wait to have his nose rubbed. On a rare occasion, that is. But for the most part, they don't want you to mess with the nose. They're very sensitive about the nose. So approach the shoulder. It's a neutral zone. The shoulder is a neutral zone. The hip says go, go forward. The nose says go backward or go away from me or come to me. So you always approach the shoulder. Now, you're in a round pin. Uh, this is round pin. You're, uh, the question is, you don't leave her in there, do you? I mean, you feed her and water and everything in there. You should never do that in a round pin. Don't want to do that. Round pin is only for work. Only for work. Now, when you put this mule up every day, she should go in a 20 by 20 stall. 20 by 20 stall. And then when you put the come along rope on her, do come along rope first. The only reason I'll use a round pin is for two reasons. One, to do surf single work. The other one is to teach to, to catch them. Teach them how to catch them. So there's the approach. The approach is you always approach the shoulder. Don't approach the nose. If you start to walk toward them, don't look down. If you look down and look back up, you just ask permission to come to that mule's, being that mule's herd. What do I mean by that? When a new mule comes into a herd, they will lick their lips and they will duck their head and they will ask permission by the, by the herd leader to come into their herd. That's what they'll do. So when you look down, you just ask permission to come into their herd. So now they think you are the herd and they're the leader. So that's why they turn around and take off. Other reason, reason they take off is because people have approached them to the nose. Don't do that. Approach them to the shoulder, to the shoulder. Now, you're gonna do everything in threes. One of the downsides is we always tend to overdo things. So here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna have the gate be your, your, your spotting point. You're going to have that mule go around. And as the mule's going around clockwise, you're going to step toward the nose. But, and, and the mule's going to turn and look at you. When it does, when it look, turns and looks at you, back away. Go back to the hip. Say, move off. And as the mule's moving off, you come back to that gate again. This is number two. You step to the nose. 
the mule stops and looks at you. You step back, go over to the left, and then the mule goes off. You're going to do three to the right, three to the left, and you're done for the day. No more. What we don't want to do is do like the John Lyons round pin stuff, where they run and run and run and run. They get so tired they can hardly stand. No, 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 no. You do that with the mule, he'll put you on total ignore. But watch the videos there. I got, uh, you can get that five DVD set, Dave, at uh, How To, and the very first part of it teaches that. But the big thing you got to do is don't do so much the round pin work. Get the come along hitch on that mule and start teaching that mule about the come along hitch. That's the best way to do it. Very good. Thank you, Noel. Tina wrote in, says, I bought the come along from you, but I have a hard time when I work with her. She wants to be close to me. So when we're walking, I've been working on personal space with a bump and she'll do good. But when I step away, she comes towards me. I bump her back. After three times, she gets pretty darn mad about the whole thing. What do I do? Stop it and try again tomorrow. I don't want her to get a bad experience. They remember uh, they remember bad as good as the experience. What would you say to Tina, Steve? Okay, Tina, this is your timing. It's not the meal. It's not the come along hitch. It's your timing, okay? If that meal comes into your space, it was your timing. You did not wiggle the rope. Right, left, right, left says, wait right there. If the meal keeps coming, then you go down. Bump, 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 ask, tail, ask, right, left, right, left, tail, bump, bump, down, and demand, bump, 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 really hard, okay? It's your timing that allows them to come into your space, okay? She has learned that you, or your timing isn't there, so you need to work the small, small way. So I would stand there with her standing there, and if she looks to the right, bump her. If she looks to the left, bumper. If she looks straight ahead, bumper. Start standing still first and then work your way to moving. Folks, this is always your timing. Now imagine this. You're in the saddle and you can't get her to stop. If you can't do it on the ground, why are you in the saddle? Don't do that. Get it together first on the ground because whatever you get on the ground is what you're going to have in the saddle. Very good. Next question. This one comes in from Vicky. Vicky is looking to start driving carts and buggies. And she says, do you have any trainer you could recommend in my area, which is Northern San Diego? I caught your seminar last night. Living uh, here, you can ride all year long. And so she's wanting to start doing uh, carts and buggies. And so I told her that we don't necessarily have anybody uh, that we recommend, but what would you say to somebody who's looking for help looking for a trainer to, to do this sort of thing, what type of encouragement would you offer them, Steve? I would say do it yourself. Don't, these trainers folks out there, I, uh, there are so very few that even comes close to training the mule right. I hear these horror stories all the time of so-called trainers that have done more bad than good. I've got these videos out there and I've got a lot of people doing it. <clears throat> we probably got people coming up online nice and I'm saying I did it I did it myself you can do it I've got videos that shows you how to prepare them and how to ground to drive them and how to put them in carts all first time stuff that you can do yourself don't go paying somebody 1200 bucks a month to train on that thing do it yourself Awesome. Very good. Uh, let's see here. The next question that we have, uh, let's see here. This one uh, comes in from YouTube and says, uh, so we were talking about a surf single on this video on YouTube and the viewer said, okay, so you're not using a crouper. What about using a crouper for pulling a cart or wagon? Would you use a crouper then? So first, why don't we use a crouper with the saddle? And then second, would you use a crouper for pulling a cart or wagon? A crouper is part of harness for wagons, but it has to also have a breaching because the idea of the breaching is actually your brakes on that wagon, not just a crouper. So you don't want to use this crouper. When you have harness, that crouper helps keep the breaching from climbing up the hip. That's the reason it was developed, folks, because what happens is, the hip safe that goes on top of the hip on a saddle, it's back toward the croup. On the 
on the uh, driving harness, it's in front of uh, uh, the, the point of the croup and dock of the tail. Okay, so so it's the point of the croup is where the hip safe is for harness. Dock of the tail is where back toward the back is where it is for riding saddles. So with what happens is with that hip plate being in front of the hoof, in front of the of the hip, it wants to go down and then it brings the breaching up and then it doesn't work correctly. So that's the purpose of a crouper is to keep the breaching from climbing up the hip. Now, so you will use a breaching, absolutely. Well, I won't use one on a crouper on a saddle because it's too easy to break a tail. And, and some of you have probably heard me tell the story. There's three people that had contacted me Want me to put a tail crouper on my saddle? I said, I don't sell a saddle with a tail crouper. Won't do it. Once you bought it, you can do whatever you want to do. All three of them people called me back within six months of each other. All three of them have broke the tails on their mules, and uh, they had to put them down. So that's one of those deals where you're going to hear uh, lots of folks say, well, I've always heard this, or I've always done that. And so we'll go ahead and we'll tell you what experience has taught us, and you can Take that and run with it, and if it works for you, it works for you. We want you to avoid uh, any type of issues like that, and so uh, we've got that experience and that expertise that we'll we'll share over there. Another thing that folks uh, have have a hard time, um, you know, because they may have been told something different, is that you can ride a mule or a donkey without shoeing them. You don't need to shoe them. I was told that, uh, and you know, don't need to shoe them, and I've done it for long enough, and it's worked just fine for me, um, Steve. That's something that a lot of folks say. What do you say to that when folks say, don't need to shoe a mule or a donkey? Every mule and donkey has contracted heels. And if you've got a contracted heel, that means you don't have a big, fat, healthy frog. And if you don't have a big, healthy frog, you're not going to have blood going up and down the leg like it should be. That's really important to understand. So what happens? What is, uh, what are we talking about? So we're talking about the back of the hoof. This is the back of the hoof, and this is the frog in the middle. And what happens is the one side or the other gets contracted and starts twisting in. When it starts twisting in, that frog now is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. And now you don't have the blood flow. So the big thing is with these mules and donkeys, you keep them shod right, you keep them trimmed right, you'll have a healthy foot. If you don't, you'll end up with an unhealthy foot. Next question I got, this one comes in from Carrie over on YouTube. She says, I have a Shetland mule that weighs 550 pounds. Uh, three questions. I weigh 163. Can I ride her? I can't afford a Steve Edwards saddle right now. Ha ha. Mule saddle? No. Steve Edwards saddle right now. So I will have to ride bareback or with a bareback pad. Are there bareback pads with a back cinch? Lastly, she has upward fixation of both uh, patellas. Can I still ride her? She is 12 years old. I've been riding since I was five. I am now 55. She is so smart and willing to learn. She was barely halter broke when I got her four months ago. Now I can ride her, bridle her, and trim her hooks. I am madly in love with her and now mule obsessed. Thank you. What would you say there to Carrie, Steve? You know, you can ride for a while bareback, Carrie, and, and you'll do just fine. Um, to be honest with you, 160 pounds is quite a bit <clears throat> on that little mule. But here's just like anything else, folks. If you exercise, exercise in preparation just to get the tendons right and this sort of thing. It's not so much the size. It's easy to blow a tendon, really easy. The thing about a saddle is you evenly distribute the weight of the other person across the back with the bars. You can't do that bare, bareback, you know. Do they make bareback pads with two sensors? No, they don't. Uh, rear straps, uh, you'll have to make one up as a way to do it. Um, I strongly suggest, I suggest using the little mule for not so much riding, but for pulling a cart. Man, you'll have a lot of fun pulling a cart. Very good. Uh, had a lot of really fun comments uh, coming in over on YouTube. Uh, uh, Diane says, uh, Right after I heard Steve say he had six hip surgeries, I've only had four. Still ride my horse and now working with my donkey. 
uh, praying now for your wife. Uh, so that was real sweet and, and fun. Uh, we had a, a couple more friends from uh, upstate New York come in and watch. So that's very good to have you. Uh, let's see. Um, another friend says, uh, oh, let's see here. Where is it? I've been wa Merlin just start just found us. It seems on YouTube says I've been watching about four of your videos a day. It is winter and it is cold outside. I don't have a mule yet, and I won't until at least spring. I'm taking this time to learn about mules as I have only trained horses to date. I have handled mules enough to know that I don't know enough uh, enough about them. I've learned a lot and I thank you for it. I can't do construction here until the frost goes in the spring and I need to get set up for mules with a different stable and pens before I get a mule. I need to have a place where I can work. Um, let's see, twenty. Uh, need to have a place where I can work with a mule in the winter so the new stable will have 20 foot square stall for my mule. I will be able to work in... I, I will be able to work inside with them. It gets negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit here, so I need to work inside. It will be end of my day before I can get the necessary facilities for a mule so I can work with him or her. Uh, so anyways, if I'm lucky, maybe I will get a mule that I will be able to ride before next winter. It will depend on the mule and what kind of foundation he or she has when I get it. Thank you so much for all of the education that I'm getting. So I thought this might be a cool opportunity to just encourage Merlin and other folks who are in a similar situation situation of, hey, I've never had one. I don't have one right now. I'd like to get one. I've been watching your videos. What encouragement do you have for Merlin and other folks in that situation, Steve? Well, hey, Merlin and, and all the rest of you, good for you for getting education and preparing things ahead of time. I hear all these stories all the time of people saying, well, I, uh, I decided just to go ahead and ride anyway. Like uh, we talked about last week with this one lady, <clears throat> she had to be helicoptered out. She didn't want to take the time to put the breaching on and listen to what I had to say on the video. So don't do that, folks. Don't end up in the ER. Don't end up in the helicopter flight. Take your time, prepare, get things ready. And when you do it, do it right the first time. It'll work good for you. I've got all that free videos out there, 450 some videos, I guess, this day. And we got the, we got the tools to do it and the know-how to do it. Just do it yourself, but take your time and enjoy the ride. Now, what'd you say about those videos? We got like 450 videos out there. And YouTube. they are? YouTube. Free. <laughs> <laughs> then we drop on the F-bomb. The F-bomb. <laughs> our our F-bomb is free. <laughs> Jess likes that. Jess heard it and is, uh, is coming to the rescue. Jess loves the F-bombs too. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, I, got a, I got a comment here. This one came in from Catherine. Uh, said, uh, from Ontario, Canada. So that means that we've gone international here. Uh, I'm searching for a saddle for my mule and I came across your website. My number one priority in a saddle is that it fits is as comfortable as a saddle can be for a mule and stays put. My second priority is lightweight, and I must say that is not a common finding in these mule saddles. I'm interested in your trail light saddle and the extreme ultralight saddle. Um, I did not, let's see, my preference is for all leather, but of course that comes with added weight compared to Cordura. I wonder how do you manage to keep the weight on the ultralight down to 20 pounds? So, how is it that you're able to get these saddles all the way down to 20 pounds and even lighter in some cases, Steve? Well, it's the type of leather that we're using now that we got it from Argentina and it's already pre-dyed, pre-oiled <coughs> and it's a really nice leather. I'm finding, I'm finding out, Dave, I don't need to have a big heavy saddle to make it work. So the type of leather that we've been using has been a good quality leather. You can see it in the saddles and, uh, and it works good. So the uh, like the, uh, uh, the extreme man, it's it's really nice, and it only weighs twenty pounds for a sixteen inch. So, and as a matter of fact, uh, my trail light, uh, I've got both the Buckaroo light and and the trail light. Uh, they're only eighteen pounds, and that's Cordura, and it's tough. Uh, you know, I would I personally that Cordura saddle. There's no maintenance to it. That's what I like about it. Well, in the trail light saddle. Uh, with the Cordura, that's what you ride. So when when if y'all come out here and y'all see Steve ride, uh, he's got one of his uh, 
that one of his older saddles has been riding for years and you'll see that thing has taken a beat and, and it just keeps on going. It, it looks great. Um, it, it has that rugged cowboy look uh, that you're wanting and it, Steve has definitely put the miles on it. Um, but that's what Steve personally rides in is, uh, is the trail light saddle. And that's very cool getting the, uh, the buckaroo light now with the, the Cordura as well. Um, had a question come in, uh, from Paula saying, isn't feeding donkeys in the cold wind and rain a huge no, no for donkeys, but it's okay for horses because of the type of fur hair and lack of oil that donkeys have or, or, uh, don't, uh, would love to know your thoughts. What would you say there to Paula? You know, Paula, don't listen to these folks that talk about that. Uh, <coughs> I know up in Montana where it gets below zero quite often, 30 plus, plus, and them donkeys are standing out there like they're standing out in sunshine. They do just fine. They do just fine. Uh, I've also seen them in, in 125 uh, degrees and in heat, and they do just fine. Um uh, uh, some people like to blanket them and you can if you want to, but I've got clients and they'll probably be texting here now all over the United States and other countries. Well, uh, uh, there's a lot of countries that like in Norway, uh, we got some clients there and that's cold. And guess what? They got donkeys and they're using them and they're out in pastures and this sort of thing. So uh, there's a lot of folks put out a lot of information out there that they're just kind of it's hearsay and they don't have any experience behind it. So I would say to you, don't worry about that donkeys. They'll be just fine. All right. Very good. I think, I think that's just about everything. Let's see. Okay. Here's one that we didn't get to. This one is from Lisa it says, uh, hello from South Dakota. Say, uh, I just bought a mule saddle that has never been touched, he, uh, or a mule that has never been touched. He is a year and a half old. Can you give me some pointers on how fast I should go? I have had him for about five days, and I can rub his neck and nose. Thank you. Good for you. Uh, it's all going to depend on your timing and the mule. You know, uh, sometimes you have to go, you can go fast at it. Sometimes you can go slower at it. The big thing is, quicker you get the come along hitch on, the quicker you're going to have a nice animal. Don't, don't spend a lot of time trying to pet him. Okay. Uh, keep him in a small pen. Do not put him out in a big pen. You can use a 20 by 20 pen and you'll make a lot of headway. You don't feed them if they don't come to you. And if they don't come to you, we ain't feeding them. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm there. I'm just, uh, typing in, uh, where, um, Let's see. This is for Lisa, uh, on her December 6th program. Right. Yeah, we've got some of those videos of, of how to approach the mule, like the one lady that has that black and white mule and how we did with uh, the folks with their, you know, approaching the shoulder and, and putting a come along hitch on. That's all good stuff. The round pin gets overused. Why do folks want to go to the round pin just off the bat? Is there a reason why folks want to go to the round pin as opposed yeah, to doing know, stuff in the stall? Easy. John Lyons put round pin reasoning into place years ago and was selling the heck out of the round pins. And everybody thinks that's the way to go. And it's not. Okay. Especially with a meal. The sooner you get the come along hitch on them, the better it'll be. You'll have a whole different respect using that come along hitch. Yeah. And one thing that, uh, that I've heard you, you know, modify here over the last 10 years, of course, uh, one of the things that folks love about just listening to what you have to share, Steve, is that you're, um, you know, even now in your 70s, having been doing this for your entire life and working with these mules, you know, longer than I've been alive, uh, you continue to learn new things and make adjustments. And, uh, you know, one of your saddles there, folks will find uh, 2D rings in the back. And then the saddles today, there's only, uh, is it in the back or in the front? What 2D rings in the front, but today you only have one because you learn that really, I don't need those two. I get the right positioning that I need. So you know, I'm not going to add unnecessary weight, put unnecessary hardware on it that's not needed. And, and what I'm getting at here is uh, is that over time you've learned, you've developed, you've made adjustments, you've made you know tweaks, and we're continuing to learn that stuff now. It's not something that we just okay, that's the way it is, and that's the way it's always going to be. Like you're still learning things today. Folks will find on these programs that you'll say, "I've never heard about that." If you find out the answer, come back and let me know. Ain't that right? 
Yeah, absolutely. You know, just like just like my training, if it don't work for you, don't use it, you know. But I can tell you, just there's not a day that don't go by. At, at least four people today that I've talked to said, man, you changed my whole way of thinking. <coughs> uh, this one, did. let's see here. Uh, I actually think, I actually think that's that's everything for today. Yeah, that's everything for today. That's done. So uh, what do you have going on here uh, the rest of the week, Steve, before, uh, before you hit the weekend? Well, it's going to be... Um, uh, helping my wife out, you know, she had some minor surgery there, uh, from her cancer that she had seven years ago. We kind of knew this thing was coming, but it was a small problem and it's all under control. So helping her get through that and getting the house clean. And when she says, use the mop, I use the mop, said broom, I use a broom, you know, and, and that's, that's what I, that's what I'm doing now. And whatever she needs help with, that's what we're going to do. Uh, rest of the week is going to be, uh, we got all this rain here. So, um, I can't do any burning anything, so I'm going to be working with some odds and ends. I got a lot of small things that I've got to do. I can't do any burning. I'm just picturing you going outside and just lighting fires everywhere. Well, that's actually, I've got piles of brush here and there. Oh, no kidding. I, I go out with a big burner and I get it started and it burns it down. Now, you, you'll see, you know, you city folks are different. <laughs> you come out here and you'll look around and you'll see little smoke fires here and there and all of us wait until we get a pretty good rain and then once it kind of starts drying up a little bit we start little fires and we've got little fires all over the place where we're burning burning brush and stuff that we've been piling up for about a year now if there's anyone who is qualified to go out there and do start these uh controlled burn brush fires it would be mr steve edwards a lot of folks don't know this but in addition to being a uh, mule trainer, in addition to being a cowboy, in addition to being fluent in Spanish, in addition to being fluent in auto mechanics, in addition to be fluent in body shop repair, uh, in addition to all of the things that, uh, that Mr. Steve Edwards knows, uh, Mr. Steve Edwards is also a firefighter. Ain't that right, Steve? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, sure am. Yeah. Volunteer for the Queen Valley uh, fire department. And, uh, I've told this story several times. Steve's heard it, but for our friends who are just hanging out with us for the you know, last new, new in the last 18 months or so, uh, Steve and I have a mutual friend, uh, Mr. Michael Decker and Michael and I have been best friends for a long time. Very good man. Loves Jesus. Uh, just fantastic man of God. His family is fantastic. And, uh, Steve is, uh, or Michael's the one who actually, actually introduced me to Steve. And so fast forward here about 13 years or so, Michael and I are hanging out and he looks at one of these videos that we did here on YouTube and he goes, is that Steve Edwards dressed up in a fire uniform for a mule talk? I said, yes, it is. He goes, why is Steve Edwards dressed up as a fireman? Well, Michael had moved away and he was just getting the memo that Steve Edwards volunteers for the Queen Valley Fire Department and uh, does a mighty good job there too, helping them with fundraising and all sorts of other di additional things. So that's that's pretty good there too. That's fun. Yeah. Also the chaplain too. Chaplain, you know, that's the, right. The chaplain form, but yep. I go into car accidents. We go on fires. We have, you know, we have people with all kinds of EMS stuff. So you know, uh, just the other night I went on a a little a little deal where a guy uh, he was kind of suicidal, you know, and was able to help him through. Yeah. And so that's that's one of the things that the Lord's led me to do. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, it's very good. All right, folks. Thank you so much for hanging out. We are so glad that you are here here with us today. Be sure sure to go to muleranch.com uh, in the coming days. We're going to have that new saddle up there so y'all can go check it out and explore and just see what Mr. Steve Edwards has been up to in that cowboy world. And uh, maybe you're going to find yourself that perfect saddle fit you've been waiting for. Steve, we'll talk to you soon, okay? All right, partner. Have a good one. See you later. Bye-bye, everyone.